uh, as he said, my name's Laura Peppel. I'm an engineer with Puck, formerly Puck Custom Enterprises. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, have, have heard of us. Uh, the title that they, uh, they threw out to me was they wanted me to talk about economics of manure application and manure handling. It's a, it's a pretty intense topic, and if you would let me, I could probably talk about it all day long. But, granted, it's a short session, and I know it's not everybody's most popular topic. I tried to keep it short, sweet. Uh, but if you have questions, feel free to, to ask. We'll also have, hopefully, time at the end for, for a few as well. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, a brief history on the company that I work for, just in case you're not familiar with us. Uh, also going to go over, if you were to buy a dragline system today, what does that system look like? A lot has changed in the dragline industry in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, so we're going to go over what some of those changes are. Uh, and then get into the two topics that they asked that I cover, uh, tank versus drag, and uh, some manure agitation and pipeline type uh, considerations. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Puck is a family owned business. Uh, we started 40 years ago this year. Uh, we started out as a, a custom hauler, custom chopper. Uh, we started out with, with back trucks uh, and in the mid 90s we upgraded the Hool tanks and in the late 90s converted to a dragline system. It was uh, about this time that after owning a variety of, of manure application equipment, we got to the point we were so frustrated with breaking things that we started building our own. So innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. At this point, we decided that we no longer wanted to be a follower, we wanted to be a leader uh, and build our own stuff. What did that look like? So in the mid 2000s, we were the first ones to develop the bypass. So if you're familiar with dragline pumps, if you had a dragline pump in the early 2000s, in order to clean that hose out and blow a pig, you had to go up to each booster, take the hose off the booster, try and put it back together, cover yourself in shit, blow the pig, and connect it back, right? Some of you probably remember that. Now it's standard. The other innovation we came up with in the early 2000s was the two-way hydraulic cart. Most of you probably remember Cadman's original cart. You could roll hose up, but what couldn't you do? You couldn't roll it back down, right? So in order to roll the hose back down in the early 2000s, you had to have a four-wheeler following the, the hose cart, driving on the hose to lay it out, right? Pretty good innovation. The other thing we came up with was the tractor mounted swing arm. Uh, what this did was allow us to increase the width of our toolbars, take the weight off the three point, put it onto the tractor itself, uh, decreased our turnaround time, improved our efficiency in the field. Uh, we are still the sole uh, manufacturer of this piece of equipment. So what do we look like today? Uh, we started uh, we sold our first piece of equipment in 2007 out of a 3,000 square foot barn at Ben Puck's home place. That's right across the creek from, from this facility. Today we have 170,000 square feet under roof in four locations. Manning, Iowa is our headquarters. We also have a parts and service store in Sioux Falls and Dubuque. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Dubuque, Iowa. We recently as of last spring, purchased a lay flat hose manufacturing facility that is in Angier, North Carolina, and manufactures lay flat hose under the name of Bulldog Hose Company. So, let's get to the, uh, the guts of the presentation. So, modern dragline system. What are some things that have changed in the last 10 years? And if any of you have worked with a dragline system, you probably already know most of this. We've increased the, the horsepower. Uh, we've increased hose size, right? It used to be that Cadman's hard hose at, at four inch or six inch mainline was, was the cat's meow, right? Now, um, most people are going with eight and 10 inch lay flat, considering 12 in some situations. Larger, more efficient pumps. We used to, we used to run uh, either homemade pumps, um, 
or smaller diameter, 17 inch pumps, now 19 inch or standard. Less fuel consumed, better tillage options. Uh, the tillage options, I threw that on there last minute um, because I actually hadn't thought about it, but 15 years ago there was probably a lot of systems that were still running rippers regardless of, of what they were applying, uh, where now we have coulter till options, many more minimum tillage options available uh, to get the, the type of coverage and um, field condition that you, you're really looking for from a landowner perspective. So what's driving these changes? In this case, um, we are being driven by smaller windows of application, Last fall being the primary, uh, a really good example of that. Our own crews, um, which I forgot to mention, we still run three application crews a year that apply 210 million liquid gallons annually, 60-40 um, split between dairy and, and swine. So we're, we still have men on the ground that apply this and use our equipment uh, every spring and fall. And last year uh, we went from 130-ish days to apply to, I think, if you add our spring and fall together, we may have had 67 or so dry days for the year uh, that fell in our window where crop farmers were willing to give us access to those fields or the crops were out ready for manure in the fall, right? Fall was brutal last year. So window of opportunity keeps getting smaller. Uh, more gallons to apply with, with fewer crews available. So if you are a, a swine producer and you rely on a custom applicator, I'm here to tell you that as a custom applicator, I'm, I'm getting the better end of the deal. There is so much demand for my type of work that I can turn people down. If you're not willing to pay my, pay my rate, then you know, I can easily say, well, I can go pick up another couple of million gallons down the road because your neighbor is. So in addition to being high demand, your particular industry in the last several years has built a lot of barns. Barns equal manure. At that rate, our industry's not matching that. We're not bringing in new young people that are just really excited right, to be a custom applicator. It's just not happening. So we have to figure out from an industry perspective, how do we get more gallons in the ground faster, right? How do we become more efficient with the people and the resources that we have available to us? And need for safer work environment. So what does that look like? Just through this slide in, um, in 2009, if you look at the engine, pump, hose, flow, productivity, fuel consumption, labor, for a drag line, you probably had a repurposed engine you either had a, a homemade pump or a 4 inch HTV 17 from Cornell. You were probably running six inch mainline. Your, your average max flow was sitting at about 1,500 gallon a minute for your system. Probably running less than that on a daily basis. Productivity max was 90,000 gallons per day, per hour, excuse me, per hour. Fuel consumption was probably around 700. If you look at today's systems, if you were to come buy a brand new dragline system, what would you expect? You would get a new 9 liter or 13 liter, depending on what type of manure you're applying. If you're solely going to apply finishing manure, you don't need the extra horsepower from the 13. You can get by with just the 9. 19 inch uh, MPC, 6819 comes standard. Uh, you've got other options, but that's the standard. Uh, it has a max flow on the curve about 3,500 gallon a minute. Eight inch mainline, most likely six inch drags. This system with this setup gets you most likely 3,200 gallon a minute max to the applicator. Now I just told you the pump is 3,500. The system can spit out 32. Does anybody know what my limitation is? It's my drags. So two six inch drags consumes too much pressure. I can't get that high a flow. If I swap one of those six inch for seven inch, I'm pretty darn close to what that max, matching what that pump can, can put out. Uh, productivity doubles, 
fuel consumption goes down. Why does it go down? We're more efficient, right? We're spending less time applying more gallons. Name of the game. So it's costing us less to put more gallons on faster. Labor, both systems would have taken three men. With today's control systems, we rarely see a dragline crew with more than three guys. Ten years ago, you may have had a person per pump, depending on what your situation was. So again, if you were to, to come by a brand new dragline system, what's it going to come standard with that it didn't 10 years ago? State-of-the-art control systems. 10 years ago, it was a perk if you were able to monitor, monitor your pressures without having to walk up to a, a pump and look at a manual gauge. Safety shutoffs, unheard of 10 years ago. Now our control systems can, and from an industry perspective, our control systems can auto detect pressure spikes, drops, and shut down immediately. Right, so that's going to allow us to, uh, if something does happen, hose breaks, pump blows apart, it's going to allow us to limit and contain that problem faster. Right, so a control system can respond faster than any one of us in the room. Engine performance monitoring, uh, performance reporting, those are, are newer things that are coming online with these control systems. Uh, hydraulic and electric gates, the first uh, pumps with, with dragline systems, especially with the new bypasses on them, right, were all manual gates. If you wanted to, if you wanted to blow a pig, you had to send a guy down the line. He had to open one gate, close another on, on every pump before you could shoot that pig. Now it's all at the fingertips of whoever's driving the applicator tractor. Rear PTO options, that's more in the dairy industry. You get more flexibility. If you have lagoons, then essentially what that, that is, is is you get engines that have PTO options where you can hook up uh, hydrostats to run a stem pump or some other type of feeder pump in a, what we call a warthog package. So you don't have to have a separate type of lead pump to be able to go to a lagoon versus a, a deep pit. You have some flexibility there. So tank versus drag. Um, every situation's different. Uh, I didn't want to walk into a room of producers and assume that I knew what all of your situations were and tell you to go one system or the other. That's, that's not why I'm here today. Um, so what I chose to do was look at if I was in a producer's shoes, what would I want to know to be able to help facilitate that decision if I was considering an upgrade between a tank and a dragline system. First thing I would consider again, window of opportunity. How many days do I have? How many gallons do I, I need to get out? amount of manure, how many gallons do I need to get out, and resources available. So what do I have today versus what am I going to need if I upgrade? So window of opportunity, what I typically look at for window of opportunity is productivity, gallons per hour, and how many days does it take to apply. So we're going to walk through an example uh, comparison. I chose a 7,300 gallon tank. Uh, I know there's smaller, I know there's larger, I decided it was in the middle, so I ran with a 7,300 gallon tank, four minute fill time, 95% full per trip, 10 minute unload time, 15 mile an hour loaded, 20 mile an hour capacity, or empty on the way back to the farm. Now I don't know if those are good, bad, or assumptions, but I decided they were fairly realistic. So. Drag line setup, it's the same drag line we, we mentioned earlier, 8 inch main line, uh, plenty of horsepower, 6 inch drags. The only change that I made is I told you that this drag line system had a max flow rate of 3,200 gallon a minute. I'm, I'm capping it at 2,000. And I'm capping it at 2,000 because when you look at a drag line system when it goes to apply finishing manure, that's typically about the max rate that you're going to apply at unless you have a toolbar that's wider than 35 foot. 
If you have a tool bar that's wider than 35 foot, you can go a little higher than this, right? Our application rates are so low for finishing barn, we just, we can't drive fast enough through the field. So I wanted to be able to compare finishing to finishing. So if we look at tank productivity, if we're applying within the first mile, then with the assumptions that I made, you're looking at 20 minute round trip, give or take. Three loads an hour. So you take those three loads over an hour, you're, you're right at 20,000 gallons per hour uh, to apply within a mile with a tank. That's 48% that's efficient. That's actually not bad. That's right in tank's wheelhouse. It's hard to beat. If I'm, t if I'm within two miles, I'm still not bad. I get two loads an hour. My efficiency drops, right, because I'm, I'm driving a little further empty. It takes a little longer to get to the field. I'm at 36% efficient, but I'm still getting 15,000 gallons per hour. It's still not bad for a tank. Where it gets a little, little hairy is if you're beyond that two miles, at five miles, we're at basically one trip an hour, 20% efficient, and maybe 8,500 gallon an hour applied. That stings a little bit, depending on how much manure you have. So if we take the dragline system and compare it back to what the tank system was within a mile, 2,000 gallons a minute, 70% efficient. So what does that 70% efficient mean? With tank, we know what the 48% the efficient meant. And then my productive time is the 10 minutes it took me to apply, and the rest of it's the dead time. You know the loading, the, the driving down the road, the driving empty. With a dragline system, it's our setup and tear down. Because once we get up and running, we run. Unless there's a breakdown. So it's continuous application. You never shut down for anything. Um, definitely don't shut down for fuel. If you have our application manager, it really frowns upon that for fueling up equipment in the middle of the day. So 70% efficient, that is using an estimate of a uh, half hour to lay down hose per mile, an hour to pick it up per mile. So to get within one mile with eight inch hose at this flow rate, we only need one pump. As long as you don't have really, really drastic terrain, which in central Missouri where we're at, you got to take what we can get. In some places, we have to deal with that terrain, so we may need more than one pump. But in this case, I need a lead pump. And it's going to get me about 8,400 gallon per, per hour. It's a big jump over 20,000, right? At two miles, I get the same flow rate. I need one booster. So I've got a lead pump and I've got a booster to be able to get to that two mile. And my productivity drops to about 6,600 gallon per hour. At five miles, to keep it simple and only add one more booster, I had to drop my flow to get 1,600. Otherwise, I was going to need four pumps, give and take. So at three pumps, I'm still at 38.4. I'm still beating the tank. If you had if you wanted to match these, these uh, productivity rates using tanks, you would need at least four tanks to match this system. Now, am I saying that drag lines are superior to tanks? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying in this scenario, if you look at it just based upon productivity and efficiency rates, this is what you're going to get. This is what you would expect gallon per hour applied for these two types of systems. But it's relative, right? So if I have one finishing barn, maybe a couple of finishing barns, do I really need a system that's going to apply at 8,400 or 84,000 gallons per hour? Does it really pay off? How long does it take? So if I've got one million gallons, so typical 100 by 200 finishing barn to apply, that's 144 loads, 70 hours, or six days to empty that barn. Drag line system takes 15 hours, 1.3 days. 
I think you can see pretty clearly why you see a lot of custom applicators switching from tapes to drag line systems, right? From their perspective, more done, more money in my pocket. It makes sense. It doesn't necessarily make sense though from an owner operator. It really depends on what your objectives are, how many days you have to apply, and how many gallons you need to get out. Because if we look at five million gallons, 720 loads with a single tank, we're still at 330 hours, 28 days for a tank system. It's not necessarily unreasonable, right? We can all imagine putting 330 hours on our tractor in a year, not necessarily unreasonable. But if you get at 10 to 25 million, now all of a sudden you're talking about 670 hours or 1670 hours. Clearly we can see that that's not feasible with a single tank. So we either need to get more resources or we need to switch systems. So if I have more resources, what's it look like? We already know that to match the dragline system's uh, production, we need to have at least four tanks on the ground. So let's look at what it takes if we had three tanks. We're going to get pretty darn close. So if we had three tanks at a million gallons, that's 48 loads each, 23 hours, two days. Now we're talking, right? We don't have tanks hanging out at, from a custom applicator perspective. It's comparable, right? I'm, I'm willing to, to do that. At 5 million, 240 loads each per tank, 110 hours, 9 days. Still not unreasonable, but we don't see a, um, a lot of custom applicators doing that uh, unless they're in a, a dairy type situation. And then 10 and 25 million. So 220 hours, 550 versus 150 and, and 380. So essentially, if we were doing, doing 5 miles, or doing 25 million with a drag line is equivalent to doing 5 million with a tank based upon hours and days to apply. Unless you have three tanks. That was the last slide, sorry. So other considerations when you're, when you're thinking about um, tanks versus drag, Soil compaction concerns. Uh, if you're if you're concerned about soil compaction, uh, then drag line is going to be clearly a little little higher favored than tanks. Field size and layout. If you got awkward layouts, small fields, then you're probably going to lean towards a tank. Uh, they're a little more maneuverable than a cord system in those types of setups. Road condition. If we were in the state of Wisconsin instead of the state of Missouri, the state would be regulating you out of tanks, uh, or at least trying to. They've got regulations in place already to where you can't take tanks up and down the road during certain times of the year. Uh, if you damage the road, you gotta you gotta repair it. Yada yada yada. So uh, regulations, road condition, workhorse availability. So. If we go back to three tanks versus one drag line system, we're getting comparable productivity out of those two systems, but I need an extra person. My drag line system runs with three guys. I'm going to need a, a driver per tank and at least one other person at site loading tanks, right? So now all of a sudden I need more people. Too quick. So the last point, it's really hard to read with uh, the computer and how it converted the slides, but pumping duration on pig health and barn disturbance. So if you're looking at, and this comes in more on a custom applicator type of side. So if you've got a custom applicator or two that you're considering, one's got a drag line system, one's got a tank system, how long are they going to be on site? So if you've got a five million gallon finisher or five million gallon gestation site, the drag line system is going to get it done in, in four or five days. How long is the tank guy going to be there? A long time, right? Depending on the number of tanks that he has. So that's a consideration is how long are they going to be on site uh, dealing with 
with decreased, increased ventilation, uh, curtains down type situation, uh, agitation, gases. Are there any questions over that? It was a lot of numbers. How do, so the gentleman in the front asked how we handle biosecurity from, from cell farms. So uh, for a drag line or both? So from a drag line perspective, what our crews do is we have our, our own wash bay. We have to bring all the equipment back to home base, wash, disinfect, and take it back out. The only thing that we can't wash is the hose. Everything else is, is washed. Now in some cases, depending on who you're working with, Carthridge and, and some other firms, they actually require you to, to bake. Um, bake your equipment in between uh, to ensure that you're getting everything that's on that piece of equipment, uh, including what's inside. That's a good question. Any other questions? Okay. So the, um, the last section is going to be brief on agitation and then some information on pipelines. So um, we get a lot of calls on, from owner operators that are concerned about solids buildup in their pits. Uh, and I don't blame them. Solids is a, a battle that has become increasingly difficult to deal with in, in deep pit situations. Uh, but why do, we, why do we care? One, capacity is the major one, right? We want to be able to maintain the capacity of our, our facilities, but it's also a valuable crop fertilizer. So as, as nitrogen prices fluctuate in the market, go up like they did a few years back, it becomes important that we maintain the, the nutrient value and get a well-mixed product out of these facilities. Water conservation. In the last 10 years, you guys have done an excellent job at pushing water conservation in your facilities, but we're left with a, a thicker, more nutrient-dense product to try and get to the field. Also makes it harder to mix. Faster application time, less agitation occurrence. So I can't stress this enough. If a custom applicator shows up on your site, do you think he cares about agitating eight hours in advance before he starts applying? No, right? So you're going to get as much pre-agitation as it takes him, at least from a uh, drag line perspective, as it takes for him to set up his hose. So if it takes him an hour to get his hose laid out and his booster pumps in line and, and everything set up, that's the amount of pre-agitation you're going to get before you start land applying. And then, in addition to that, we've already done the comparison between tanks versus drags in terms of, of how long it takes to apply. They're there for a day uh, on, a, on a finishing barn. Tanks might be there for two to three days depending on how many tanks they have. So the amount of overall agitation compared to 10 years ago has dropped drastically. So now we're left with barns that are full of solids. So what are our options? Agitate in advance of the custom applicator. or if you're the one doing your own hauling, agitate throughout the year. We have a lot of guys, a lot of producers that are starting to go with this, this type of route. They're buying their own tip pump, they already have the tractor, and they're agitating throughout the year. Better pumps uh, available today. Maybe they already have a tip pump, but it's 20 years old. We've made a lot of progress, even on the tip pump side, to get higher volume uh, tip pumps to run off less horsepower. Uh, Noon makes a really good one, um, as well as Hull's 8 inches is comparable to it, but Noon's I think is still a little better. Innovative systems. We do have some guys going the mass agitation route. Mass agitation is basically whole barn agitation. It's a pipe network that you put in a new build. You agitate one barn with one pump, uh, and it's a recycle system. So in the case of finishing and, and gestation barns, it's set up to be able to recycle the entire pit in eight hours, uh, get it mixed thoroughly, and then send it to the field. But from a, a capital investment perspective, this falls on the producer, right? Something you've typically not had to worry about, think about, or pay for. Uh, but we do have a lot of interest in this system, uh, and we do have quite a few guys installing it. 
All right, any questions before I start on pipelines with agitation? Okay, I can tell that everybody's eating lunch because we're all getting to the point where we're ready for a nap. All right, pipeline. So does a pipeline make sense for your operation? Uh, this is one of the, the topics that uh, they asked me to speak about. I get quite a few phone calls at work from producers that are kicking the idea around. Do I put in a pipeline? Do I not put in a pipeline? Uh, so basically what I wanted to do was share with you the list of questions that I typically ask them to help them uh, get to an answer. So where are your fields relative to your site? If you've got fields in 360 degrees around your facility, is a pipeline right for you? Probably not. But if 80% of your fields are in one direction along a linear, depending on the, the number of gallons you have at that facility, then we should start considering it. Terrain. Terrain plays less of a factor, but elevation uh, when paired with riser locations for booster pump type uh, placement becomes a factor. So if you have hillier terrain, uh, then it becomes imperative that you're actually doing the flow calculations for that pipeline before just buying it and having it installed. Size and transitions. So um, with lay flat, when we consider size of lay flat, there's no this eight inch is better than that eight inch, right? So lay flat, eight inches, lay flat, eight inch. It doesn't matter if I'm selling it, Farmstar's selling it, or somebody else is selling it, right? We know that the diameter of that hose is eight inch, same with 10, same with 12. Pipeline is not created equally. So the one thing that you have to pay attention to when you're looking and pricing pipeline is the internal diameter of that pipe. Because if you're buying eight inch pipe, doesn't necessarily mean that the internal diameter is eight inch. You may have just bought an equivalent to a six inch mainline for lay flat hose. So what are the most common types of pipeline that I see getting installed? That would be PVC, SDR, 26 and 21. 26 and 21, all that means is what is the pressure capacity of that pipeline? Is it 200 PSI or is it 160 PSI? HDPE SDR11, again, uh, is a 200 PSI. It's a different material. Instead of a, a poly-based, it's a uh, HD um, product instead of a PVC, polyvinyl product. So again, if you look at the pressures, typically you're looking at 200 PSI or 160 PSI. If you're a swine, then you'll, you'll want to lean towards the 200 PSI. We typically, from a dragline perspective, will, will operate a dragline system at about the 180 PSI range, give or take. But that's typically where we want to run a, a sow or a finishing facility with an 8-inch hose. The 160 is, is most commonly used at dairy because uh, our flow rates are so high that we never hit the high pressures. So if we were to compare the internal diameters on these, just for a quick reference, if you're looking at SDR, so if you're looking at 8 inch, uh, at 21, you're at 7.8, so you're pretty well nominal 8 inch. But if you're looking at the, the HDPE, all of a sudden now you're talking, it's an 8 inch pipe is a really a 7 inch pipe. So again, it's something that you certainly want to pay attention to is internal diameter. Maybe. The other thing I wanted to throw in was price per mile. These are estimates. Um, I don't sell pipe, but I, I know roughly in our area what it takes to install pipe. Uh, and when I compare that to lay flat, I'm comparing it to the cost of the hose and the cost of the cart that you're gonna need to haul the hose. So in this case, if you're looking at eight inch, you can get pipeline installed for just under 100 grand per mile, at least in our area. 
and for a mile of eight inch and the cart that takes to haul it, you're actually a little cheaper to go the lay flat side. It's when you get in the 10 and 12 inch that the price tends to, to differ. And this is actually a typo. So pipeline for 10 inch is roughly 100 grand. For the 10 inch lay flat with the cart that it's gonna take, this is actually 130. I corrected it and forgot to hit save. So 100 grand versus 130 grand. And then 12 inch, which from a swine perspective, it's, it's really too big for, for what you guys need, um, would be a little more at 105. But what's our return on that investment? So you can see that from a, a dollar perspective, pipeline is intriguing. But in five, 10, 15 years, is anybody going to give me any trade-in value for that pipeline so I can get the next newest, shiniest pickup truck off the lot? No. Um, once it's in the ground, unless you go to sell your operation and somebody finds that appealing, there's really no value that you're getting back. Especially if you have a custom applicator that shows up with a dragline system to use that pipeline. Now, if you have your own dragline system, then it's there's some cost savings there because you're not having to pay for lay flat. Something to consider. There's no trade value. It's permanent. And because it's permanent, make sure you size it accordingly. Uh, I know a producer that's actually in Missouri that has pipeline installed for their, um, their swine operation. And every year I get a phone call. How come the max that I can get from my system is 1,300 gallon a minute? And if I do the math, they should be getting closer to 1,600 gallon a minute with the system that they have. Well, it turns out they chose the size and the material on their pipeline. They went with the HDPE instead of the PVC, and they don't have an 8-inch pipeline. They really have what's closer to that picture. That's my hand. My wingspan's a little over 6 inches. right? So they thought they were getting this great deal putting in an 8-inch pipeline now all of a sudden, right, they essentially install the permanent pipeline that's the equivalent of a six inch mainline system for dragline. So just be leery of the size that you're installing um, because most likely whoever's selling you the pipeline doesn't know our application or our needs. So if it is something that you're interested in, Please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, be happy to answer any questions you have. So, tank versus drag. There's a lot of a uh, lot of things that go into that debate. Uh, what it really comes down to is what is your window of opportunity? Are you applying it yourself? How many gallons you have? Uh, and are you willing to do it over a 30-day window versus you know a much shorter window? Agitation is becoming more important. Definitely something as a owner operator we need to consider uh, more frequently uh, or be concerned about that we hadn't had to in the past. And pipelines, again, can be cost competitive and useful with the right site layout and, and decision making during the purchase process. So I know you guys are thrilled to have just sat through a, a manure presentation. <laughs> If you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, to attempt to answer them. So Joe Manfront asked what the cost per gallon uh, between the tank and and the pipe. Um, there's a that's hard to answer uh, because it, I don't know if you have your own tractors, how many tanks you have, how big your tanks are, and how far out you're going. Um, but I would say that when you look, when you compare the lay flat to the pipeline um, and you throw in tank, tank's almost always going to be cheaper, right? Because it's, it's cheaper than a drag line system is naturally. Um, but I don't have a, a good hard answer for you. Any other questions? Come on, the red hair is not that scary, I promise. Out. 
I can get you some information on that. I didn't include a lot of it, um, but I'm certainly happy to, to, to get your contact information. I can send you whatever you'd like to know. So, right, so the gentleman in the front said if I had that, that high volume mass agitation system as my inlet for the system at one end and my pump that's pulling the manure out at the other end. For the system that I designed uh, and that we recommend, it is not. It's in the same hole, you use one pump out. We have a, a trunk line that's inside the deep pit so that it's 100% containment. You don't want a, a short piece of hose that's pushing that many gallon on the outside, anything could happen, nightmares. Any other questions? Awesome, well you guys have been a, a great audience. I appreciate you not taking a nap on me. And I'll stick around for a little bit if you do have any questions and wanna come up, come up front.